Howdy y'all, Southern Teching here. You can tell I'm Southern because I'm wearing a straw hat. Later on, I was going to head down to the old swamps and do a little bit of uh, gator wrestling if you wanted to join me. Because <laughs> that's that's what people do in the South. They, they wrestle alligators for, for recreation, right? I'm sure there's somebody watching this video from the South right now that was about ready to go out and gator wrestle. And then you got a message on your phone like, ah, oh, Teching uploaded a video. Now I have difficult life choices to make, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not from the South. I'm from Pennsylvania. However, fun fact about my home state. If you actually take PA and you crop off the ends where Pittsburgh and Philly are, right in the center where I live, you essentially get a mix between Kentucky and Alabama. So that's close enough, right? Anywho, today's video is going to be about the Swamp Swamp Fruit, also known as the Numa Numa Nomi. Yada ya he, yada ya who, yada ya ha, yada ya ha. Hey, listen, you know, it might be annoying if you listen to it on repeat, uh, or if I'm the one singing it, but you have to all thank the Numa Numa guy, because we wouldn't have modern day memes if it wasn't for that man, alright? He started this back 12 years ago. Oh, God, 12 old. Alright, so anyway, yeah, uh, Numa Numa guy in One Piece, uh, is actually, uh, Caribou, Cari, Cari, how do you pronounce his name? Is it actually just pronounced, like, Caribou? Like, like, the deer? Really? Oh, okay. I've been calling him Caribou for, like, the last eight years or whatever. I don't know why anyone didn't correct me on that. Multiple people corrected me on that. Alright, so, uh, Caribou is back in the story. He is currently at the Wano Udon prison, and he's meeting up with Luffy and Raizo, and it looks like they're gonna have themselves a little bit of a prison break. So, uh, last review, I came up with the idea, like, you know what? Caribou might actually prove his worth here. He might actually turn out to be sort of, like, the key to this rebellion, because right now the rebellion's kind of in shambles. You got, you know, the, the Orochi's group, and you got the Yakuza, and you got Kaido. Pretty much all aware of when the rebellion is going down, you know, 5.30 at Habu Porch right before the fire Festival, so everyone's kind of scrambling, trying to salvage it, and as Yasu stated in the last chapter, you know, you can't just go around and say, oh, it was a, it was just a lie, that's not actually what the plan is, because if you do that, the people that were following your plan, the, the people that are your allies, might very well believe that as well, so you can't just, you know, put the plan off, you still have to do it, but everybody knows about it, so it's kind of difficult, but but now we have Caribou there, and he got released from his bindings at the prison by Rizo, and Rizo jumped inside of him, and he was using him as basically, you know, cover, so he can, you know, approach Luffy and Hyo and talk to them about, you know, the plans to break out of the, the jail. But here's the thing, though. Despite the fact that Caribou might not have a great track record, I think he's been one shot into the side of a wall, you know, three, four times in the series now? It's happened quite a bit. Um, despite all that, and despite the fact he's creepy as hell and tried to kidnap all of the mermaids, including Shirahoshi back on Fishman Island and everything, you have to give it to him. He has a pretty useful devil fruit. And in the review, I thought, you know, this might actually be the key to this rebellion. At first, I thought, you know, he could just basically be used as a uh, transport transportation wagon for all of the uh, the materials they're gonna need like you could take because he's already done that he's already stored like gatling guns and scythes and everything inside of him so you could take that to the next level and you know carry a bunch of provisions inside a caribou but then i started to think he's like you know you could take that one step further instead of just storing inanimate objects inside of him we already know he can store living things as well like we just saw rizo in the last chapter hiding inside a caribou's like muck so maybe you could store the entire rebellion inside a caribou and use him essentially like a mucky, creepy man version of the Trojan horse, right? So, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, though. Let's talk about the uh, Numa Numa Nomi and see how really useful it is. Well, it was the first Logia that was actually revealed after the time skip, and in fact, we don't really get a lot of Logias in One Piece. If you really look at a full chart, like, we had Caribou's uh, you know, Numa Numa Nomi, and then after that, we had Caesar's Gas Fruit, and then Monet's Snow Fruit, Ever since Punk Hazard, though, we haven't been introduced to a new Logia. They're very rare. They're very few and far between. We had Sabo that consumed the Mara Mara no Mi and Dress Rosa, but we already knew what the Mara Mara no Mi was. I'm talking about, like, brand new Logias. We don't get those very often. So, yeah, it was interesting because when we first met Caribou, it's like, oh, okay, he's got a Logia. He might actually turn out to be a real threat. Then, I think he was really used to just show how much the Straw Hats have grown because, you know, the Straw Hats, you know, especially Luffy, Sanji, 
and uh, Zoro all know hockey. So on the trip down to Fishman Island, you know, Caribou attacks them. And it's like, oh no, he's a Logia. But it doesn't really matter because the Straw Hats can now hit him. So they're not like afraid of Logias anymore, okay? So it's not enough to just have some idiot that eats a Logia and is all of a sudden strong enough to wipe out the crew. You know, Luffy and Zoro and Sanji can take those guys out no problem. And it was actually Frankie that was the MVP in that little scuffle because he just took a barrel and because he's basically made out of ooze and muck, you just throw him in there and then bolt it shut, get it airtight so he can't move, and then he's basically stuck there, right? So Caribou didn't really leave a lasting impression like he was going to be a serious villain. He's popped up a few times since then uh, during, like, throughout Fishman Island while Hody was doing everything. He was off to the side in Mermaid Cove, you know, trying to kidnap all these mermaids to sell on the surface. At the very end of the arc, he's there again, spying on uh, Robin and Neptune's conversation. So actually, he knows a lot about the ancient weapons. In fact, he knows that Shirahoshi is Poseidon, and only a very few amount of people know about that in the world. I'm wondering if he actually spilled the beans about that to X-Drake and eventually to Kaido, so who knows? That might come out to be a thing. Like, X-Drake, because... Caribou doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would, uh, you know, be able to have a lot of restraint during being interrogated. You know, he seems like the kind of guy that if you chain him up with Sea Prism and you start to torture him, he would spill the beans almost to me. Like, tell us what you know! Like, oh, sure, oh, she's Poseidon, she's the ancient weapon, she can control Sea Kings, oh, but she doesn't really control the power all that well. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. You know, that would basically be Caribou. So it's possible, it's possible he might have spilled the beans to X-Drake and Kaido might know about that. Who knows, right? But anyway, yeah, uh, he eventually got one-shotted, I think, by Luffy, and then got one-shotted by Peckums, so yeah, but his Devil Fruit is very useful. It's basically a bottomless swamp. In fact, that's actually what he calls it, you know? So it's basically a Logia that's, that's mud-based in terms of just a straight-up element. You know, his Devil Fruit basically encapsulates everything about swamps or bogs, and I'm not talking about this kind of swamp. Oh, that looks kind of nice. I could have, like, a romantic walk through that. No, I'm talking about, like, the Swamp of Sorrows or sadness from freaking never-ending story, you know, the one where that horse, like, Artax got caught in for some reason, like, the horse was really depressed, I don't know, but it's like, yeah, it's like that kind of swamp, like, you go down and you don't come back up, all right, that kind of swamp, right, and so... Yeah, you know, you don't think about it at first because he got one shot so many times. It's just like, this guy's a loser. But if you sit back and think about it, having an endless little pocket dimension to hold all your shit, massively useful. Now, there's been some other Devil Fruits that kind of have this same amount of, uh, you know, the same amount of infinity or bottomlessness. We have Blamenko's Devil Fruit, who's the 6th Division Commander of the Whitebeard Crew. He has those pockets on his chin that he could pull out like giant hammers and stuff. Not really sure if they're infinite, but suffice it to say he has these little pockets that he could store giant objects in so that's something then of course the most famous probably we have the yami yami no mi blackbeard's fruit which is also this infinite darkness that he can you know suck anything into however the major difference i think between blackbeard's and karibo caribou's sorry i'm still doing it um is whenever blackbeard absorbs something and he regurgitates it it's usually destroyed or crushed because his fruit is basically the power of gravity so whenever he pulls into himself gets crushed and he has that technique liberation which releases everything he sucked up but it's not in the same state like he sucked up that entire town and when he expunged it it was all like like scrap metal and broken wood now whenever caribou takes something into his body like a gatling gun or a scythe or whatever weapon he wants even humans uh he can regurgitate them whenever he chooses and it doesn't seem like they're damaged at all they don't even seem damaged by the muck like you ever take a gatling gun and try to store that and like you know hit deep in mud it's not gonna work too well afterwards it's like oh it's kind of gunked up he seems like you got something stuck in there you know um but no with this it's just like yeah i can take any object i want throw it into my body and then whenever i want to i can just summon it out of myself you know and so that that like connects his mind to his bottomless swamp in some way where he's just like maybe it's something very similar to bong clay's fruit where bong clay has that like extra memory feature with his devil fruit so he can always remember the faces he touches maybe Maybe with Caribou, it's something like, I am always aware of everything that exists inside of me, every object I put into myself, and I can summon them up to the surface whenever I so desire, all right? Now that fruit, um, I mean, in terms of combat, it's useful because like all Logias, you know, he can't be injured by just regular physical damage. In fact, in his case, it's um, not really so much that the damage is passing through him, it's more just getting absorbed into his swamp, you know? So like, if you were to fire a cannonball at like a, like a Logia like Kizaru or a Kainu or 
or Enaru, the cannonball would just fly directly through them. They're intangible. Um, in Akainu's case, the cannonball might melt, but it's it would still pass through him and it just wouldn't hurt him. Um, but when it comes to other Logias like Aokiji, he can turn into ice, so the cannonball will still physically hit him and shatter him. It's just he won't get hurt and he can reform. So when Caribou's case, it's a little bit of the cross between that where the attack doesn't pass through him, it hits him, but it doesn't do him damage and it just gets absorbed into him. Rather, you know, if somebody took out like a cannonball, fired at Caribou, he absorbs it. He can kind of do something similar to what Luffy does. You know, he absorbs it and just like, you can have this back now and just boosh and then knock the cannonball back out at the person that fired it at him. So something like that, right? Now, when it comes to storing objects, that's all fine and dandy. It doesn't seem like the objects get damaged by the muck at all and he could summon them out whenever. Very handy to have. So at the bare minimum, if, if maybe the Trojan horse plan doesn't work too well, you could always use him as that supply wagon. You could always take all these like batterments and stuff, maybe a ballista or something, like a giant crossbow or something, and just throw it all into him. Because size is not an issue with Caribou. It doesn't really seem to be the case. Uh, even when he was absorbing Shirahoshi, which is a rather graphic you know, scene, I had to blur it because it's, yeah. But um, even when he's absorbing uh, Shirahoshi, you know, he could just extend out his swamp to several times his own body size and just increase the surface area and then drag her down that way. So it doesn't seem to be the kind of absorption like Blamenko has because Blamenko has a tiny little pocket, takes a giant hammer, and the hammer kind of gets like compressed inside the pocket. In Caribou's case, it really does seem like if he wants to absorb something really big, he can do that, but he has to increase his surface area enough to actually fit the person down there, okay? And also, because he controls mud, essentially, while he's dragging someone down, he can also cover up their mouths so they can't breathe or they can't move and it's all sticky and goopy and he's like, it, it's a very powerful fruit when it comes to capturing people, especially when they don't see it coming, because as soon as you, if, you're, if you don't know hockey and you don't have any sea prism on you or anything and he you know, begins to ensnare you, it's like quicksand, you really, you're kind of stuck at that point. You really can't get out of it once he ensnares you, all right? And he became a well, rather well-known pirate. He was a member of the next generation of supernovas after the worst generation, and he had, I think, like 200 million berry bounty. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at, all right? He was a relatively intimidating guy when it comes to, like, re regular riffraff, you know? It's And he was very cruel as well, as well as his brother, uh, Korobu, who was uh, the, uh, the, the, I think, the grave digger one, right? He was the one that always carried a shovel and had a lizard on his head. He didn't have a devil fruit, but the two were very cruel, right? So, um... Let's talk about whenever he stores people in there. All right, so we've already seen he has the ability to suffocate people with his fruit. And he does this very simply. He could just turn his arm into a wad of muck and then cover their head and then just clog up their mouth so they can't breathe. And then, you know, as you take it from there. He did that with Drip, who is the fake Sanji. Uh, and then he also did that with Scotch, who is that cyborg dude on that Kaido's island, you know, that Caribou, a Caribou ended up. Oh, damn, I'm going to keep doing that forever. Uh, that Caribou landed on, right, with the revolution and everything and he was fighting against scotch and it was this really kind of you know kind of skeeved me out when he just like turned his whole body into swamp and then just like started to shove it down his throat like you know and he couldn't breathe you know that was that was kind of messed up but it's very effectual you know what i mean hey it works right so he's definitely capable of taking out people like that but he also had these mermaids that he was storing inside of himself that he was planning on selling when he got to the surface probably something because the human auction house is no longer in business as of the two-year time skip, but there's probably other people that would say, you know that would be willing to buy a mermaid, right? So that was Caribou's plan. I don't think Caribou, you know, was like, oh, I'm gonna grab these mermaids, store them inside myself. They don't have any oxygen, so they're gonna, you know, die inside of me, and then oh, I can't sell a bunch of dead fish. You know, you know what I mean? Like, so I think he was pretty confident that while they're inside of Caribou they at least, maybe if they're not conscious, they're not going to suffocate unless he wills it, all right? And also, Rizo was in there as well. Now, granted, when we saw Rizo inside of Caribou in the last chapter, um, his head was poking out, right? Now, 
I don't think it was always like that because the whole point of it was trying to hide inside a caribou. So I think he, you know, jumped inside a caribou. And then when we see him meeting Luffy and Hyo, that's when he pulls the muck back. It's like, hey guys, it's Rizo. How you doing? So I think it is possible to breathe inside of caribou's little dimension as long as he wills it. All right. As long as he wills oxygen to enter the place, you can still breathe. It probably still wouldn't be a very comfortable environment, you know, because it's just an entire like area made of just swamp and muck and and goo um this is the second video in a row where we're talking about uh, excessive amounts of goo covering you but like all the weapons he pulls out it's not like when he pulls out the scythe it's like dripping with muck he pulls it out and it's just regular so i mean it might be kind of uncomfortable while you're inside of him but while you come out you're perfectly dry so okay everything should be good if you can live with being inside a caribou then that'd be fine caribous are you know what i wonder what caribous actually eat in the wild. Hold on, let me look this up here. Let's see here. Uh, caribou or reindeer are ruminants and they have a four-chambered stomach. They mainly eat lichens and during the winter they also consume mermaids for Damn Wikipedia! People keep changing crap all the time. Alright, anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't really see any problem with this plan. In fact, I think Oda set this up rather well. You know, he set it up in a weird way that we never really figured, you know, way back in Fishman Island, like Caribou going around and kidnapping mermaids and Shirahoshi and everything, like, oh my god, that guy is such a creep, somebody please punch him out, like a fourth time. But now, here we are in Wano, it's like, we're gonna need as much help as we can get here, and Raizo himself said, you know, this guy, he's a little skeevy, but his fruit is undoubtedly useful. He has a very useful ninjutsu inside of him, right? And Caribou himself, I mean, I'm not gonna say he's turned over a new leaf because would you ever trust this man? Uh, no, but I think he's gotten to the point where he's just been so down on his luck as of late. You know, like, think about it. Like, you know, he was he was, he was was a member of the new Supernova generation, all right? And he's at freaking Sabote, and he's like, all right, we're going to meet the new the, the Straw Hats, and we're going to be part of their crew, and, and we're going to attack them. And then that, that was, of course, the Imposter crew. So they end up attacking the real crew, and he gets shoved into a barrel. He gets separated from his brother and his crew. Um, then Jinbei beats the crap out of him, Luffy, and Peckums, and everybody on Fishman island, Jinbei takes him off the island, he ends up at G5, gets tortured, his brother comes to rescue him only to get lost in a storm, he ends up on Kaido's island, leads a revolution, gets the crap beat out of him by X-Drake, and gets thrown into the Udon prison. I think at this point, Caribou's like, alright, 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 Straw Hat, just listen to me here, just listen, okay? I just want to ride out of here, okay? Can you please just do that for me? I know we've been having a little bit of an up shit creek without a paddle, but listen, I I, I just want to get back to my crew, all right? I, I just want to get off of this godforsaken island, get back to my crew, and just continue on my piratey ways, all right? I'm not going to screw with you anybody anymore. I'm not going to try to kidnap mermaids. I'm not going to screw with you guys. I just want to get the hell out of here, alright? So I think, you know, if, if he has to go and fight in the Rebellion to do that, he's a rather cowardly guy when you really come down to it when he's faced with somebody a lot stronger than him, um, you know? So going up against a bunch of samurai and the beast pirates and everything, it would probably be intimidating for him, but if it's the only way he can get off of Wano and he can leave all this behind him, I think he would probably take that deal, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, how this exactly would go? Alright, so let's say they break out of the prison, they, they, you know, Hyo, Raizo, Luffy, and, uh, Caribou, they all get out of, oh, Kawamatsu, as well as all the other Yakuza members, of course, so they, it's a mass breakout, it's not just a few people, but let's say they get out of there, they meet back up with everybody, like Kanemon and the other nine red scabbards and everything, and they're like, all right, we got everybody out of the prison, we're regrouped, now we need to figure out some way to salvage this plan, and they come up with using caribou. Like, it would be kind of funny. You can kind of picture it like everybody's together in this room, in this meeting, looking at a map of Wano, trying to figure out what to do. And it's like, man, if only we had, like, some kind of way to hide our presence up until the last minute, you know? But it's just, we have too many people here. There's no way we can sneak in without being noticed by somebody. And then everybody just stops and just cranes their head over to caribou and it's like <laughs> what, 
What are you guys looking at? <laughs> um, so what it could do, if, if they can breathe, okay, take all the weapons, all the armor, all the swords, all the big weapons too. Make as many weapons as you can get because apparently there's no limit. If we're going bottomless here, we're going bottomless here. All right, now, even if it isn't bottomless, like in the sense of infinity, um, it's still really big. It's a really big space, okay? So you could get away with probably storing a few hundred people in there and a few objects, um, you know, if, if that's the case. I'm sure Carib Abu probably tested this when he got his devil fruit power, like how many things can I actually fit inside of myself, and he might have never actually hit a serious limit, you know, so if he stored a lot of all this crap in there, I don't even want to know what's inside of him, I really don't. So that's the case there. Everybody jump inside a caribou, and then he'll be the one that arrives at the Habu port. And you could maybe spin it like, um, well, let's see. What you, well, what you could do is you could have another member of the rebellion maybe dress up as a member of the Beast Pirates. And, like, you know, chain up caribou with, like, just not, not sea stone cuffs, but just regular handcuffs, right? And just pretend they are. And get him to the port and just be like, I found this guy sneaking around. He's an escapee from Udon. He's like, bring him back. Bring him over to Kaido. Let us leave. Let's see what he knows. Right, and so maybe that's how they get to Onigashima, and then they're not C prism cuffs, they're regular cuffs, and then everybody just, you know, just erupts out of Caribou's stomach, which is rather disgusting, but it would be very, very effective at that point in time. Now, some other people have said this: it's like, well, you know, it would suck. Let's say everybody gets inside of Caribou, right? Wouldn't it be like if any any sort of uh, C prism comes in contact with him? Would that mean everybody gets expelled immediately, or would that mean that everybody gets trapped in him? So what I look at this is like whenever a C prism whenever C prism comes in contact with a devil fruit user, you know, their power doesn't get weakened, they themselves get weaker. You know, so Luffy can still stretch if he's underwater, it's just that he's not really conscious when it happens, but as we saw in Arlong Park, you could still stretch him, like if you somebody else grabs him and pulls, he will stretch, it's not like his Devil Fruit power goes away. So, I'm thinking even if a Sea Prism Cuff is on him, you know, I don't really know if they would get, I guess they would, get, they would end up getting trapped in him more than anything. You know, they would end up getting trapped in him, or he himself wouldn't be able to, like, you know, expel them all at once, but maybe they might still be able to crawl their way out of him. I'm not really sure about that, but I'm hoping it just never comes up, right? I'm hoping, because you would only need a split second for this. You only need a split second for all these people to just erupt outside of Caribou, unless, I, I, unless Observation Hockey can mess with that, unless you can use Observation observation to sense like I sense 300 different life signatures inside of this man's stomach and be like oh that's not everybody attack you know like I, but maybe it's not how that works maybe it's just being inside a caribou maybe screws with observation so you can't really sense other people's life energies or auras while you're inside of caribou's gullet you know so I'm, I'm hoping it's something like that but you know this would be a moment for caribou I mean Oda loves doing this stuff I love it when he's like alright I'm gonna introduce this character kind of not really an important character I'm just gonna have him pop up every now and then I'm gonna give him a cover story just for yucks but no at the end of the day at the 11th hour turned out to be rather useful so yeah you can think of a bunch of different ways you could store ships inside of them couldn't you like we're going bottomless here he's like all right everybody attack the port all right now we need a way to get across the water if only we had a giant galleon to carry everybody that had enough cannons to protect us against kaido's crew while we're sailing to onigashima oh wait hold on a second blar <laughs> blar i hope he says that too and then like a giant galleon just erupts out of him and then just lands in the ocean like everybody get aboard we're making sail to onigashima ah oh, man so there's a lot of really cool way not just cool in the sense of the uh the, the story but just some really cool artwork that can come out of this you know like you know um all of the people it could kind of like the, the the wedding cake uh gambit back when we were at uh whole cake island except that instead of just a bunch of luffy's it's like a bunch of people from the rebellion like samurai jumping out minks you know right reaching out with electro or something maybe caribou at the end of it it's like oh I've never had to eat that many people at once. I think I got indigestion, you know? Or after the fight's over, he's just like, okay, I did my job. I'm getting the hell out of here. Wouldn't it be funny if he actually tried to escape after that? Like, I'm done. I'm out of here, man. I I've done my job. And then he ends up fighting another opponent. Like, um, maybe not like a really strong member of the Beast Pirates or anybody, but, you know, like a smile user or something. And it's like Caribou actually has to fight. I love it. I love it when joke characters actually get a serious fight, you know, and it, it, it doesn't happen as much as I would like it to be, you know, I would love for Buggy to get a serious fight 
not just, you know, joking around. I mean, you could still have jokes and everything, but not just like, you know, he lies about being, I'm the great buggy and you will fear me. And then the person just holds down their sword and like, oh, I'll bow before you, Lord. No, like an actual fight where Buggy, you know, uses his Bara Bara no Mi to the fullest extent, and he pulls out his knives, and he actually clashes with somebody and wins under his own power. I, I, I would love that. I mean, because it would be like, okay, yeah, he's a Joe character, he's comic relief, but he could still fight. That would be cool. And it would be cool. Caribou, too. Like, Caribou, he fought against plenty of pirates before, and he won. He got a bounty of, like, 200-something million, right? So he'd be like, oh, I'm going up against a, you know, a, a horse smile user. N not speed. Uh, another horse smile. Maybe, like, BoJack Horseman, who's got the horse for a head this time. He's like, I'm Horseman! Yay! And Caribou's like, all right, we're actually gonna fight here. I'm not just gonna, like, run away or joke around. Or maybe he might pretend. He's like, I'm gonna run away from you now. And the horse tries to chase after him, and he gets stuck in the swamp, and he just have this scene where the horse is sinking in the swamp. See how I tied it back to Never Ending Story? The horse is seeping in the swamp and Caribou's just looming over him like hee <laughs> uh, You know, maybe maybe something like that. So he can be useful beyond just a Trojan horse. He can be useful in a bunch of different ways. So yeah, that's the Numa Numa no Mi. I think it's a pretty cool fruit. It's a Logia. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, applications for it. It's just the character himself. It, this is an example of the character eating the fruit. Kind of a moron, but but, uh, hey, if you just, hey, Caribou, I have an idea. Let Kanemon think of ways you can use your fruit for you, and I think you'll be set. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, and I hope you, uh, I hope you go out tonight and do a little bit of gator wrestling. It's a good way to unwind after a stressful day. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, uh, sign out, y'all.